It says here that a portrait of King Henry VIII, which was long thought to be lost, was located in a post on X, formerly known as Twitter. Hold that thought. What the ever-loving fuck is this formerly known as Twitter bullshit? It's been a full year since Twitter flew away and left us with X. Why do even serious news anchors on serious news programs have to say with a straight face, Today on X, formerly known as Twitter way back in the day, some clown who shouldn't mean anything to you said something that really shouldn't matter but will probably make you mad anyway. Next at 11. I mean, is X trying to be like the artist formerly known as the artist formerly known as Prince? The whole thing seems kind of stupid, but whatever. Do you, X? Formerly known as Twitter. Anyway, art historian Adam Bujakiewicz I probably butchered the hell out of that name, was doom scrolling through Twitter. X. You know, probably looking for something to stir up some self-righteous indignation because that's pretty much what humanity uses the internet for. And he came across a picture posted by the Lord Lieutenant, I think it's Lieutenant, whatever, of Warwickshire who is basically the crown's representative in central England. There in the background of some well-to-do folk with presumably posh accents hanging out in the Shire Hall of Warwick, hung the long lost portrait of the widest king in history. Now here's where I have questions. This painting was lost for a very long time, but the entire time it was hanging there in a government building with a nice little spot lamp saying, hey, look at me. And not a single art historian knew it was there. Art historians were aware that it originally hung in a tapestry maker's house in Warwickshire. So the painting literally did not go very far. So is this like when you can't find your keys, so you end up leaving for work an hour late, only to realize that you had your keys in your hand the entire time? In other art news, people are mad about the Olympics opening ceremony. Hold on. Maybe we should have a drink before we go down this rabbit hole. Just saying. Good idea, drunk me. Break out the booze! Good evening, scallywags, squids, and sea dogs, legs, troopers, and pogues. Welcome to another cerebral episode of Before the Mess, the show where I teach you how to make a cocktail and then assail my liver mercilessly with it while I share my thoughts on the idiosyncrasies of the human condition. My opinions are my own, and I hope they make you laugh more than they make you want to punch holes in the wall. That's an expensive pastime. Before we go any further, please make sure to like this video. Please, for God's sake, like me. <laughs> Do whatever you want. And subscribe. If you don't like this video or my ugly face, like and subscribe anyway. What does it hurt? Not it damn thing. Thank you. Well, now back to the matter at hand. It is hotter than a freshly fucked fox in a forest fire out here. So we need a drink that's tall and refreshing. And I kind of need to make up for last episode's heinously disgusting drink. I won't be 
doing that again. Mm -mm. So this is a good place to start. Tonight we're taking in the Queens Park Swizzle. This drink is tropical and bright, but it predates Tiki by a good decade or so. Tiki came into its own around 1934-ish, and this drink originates from the Queens Park Hotel in Trinidad circa 1920. But even Trader Vic called it the most delightful form of anesthesia. So there's that. But during Prohibition, a lot of thirsty Americans would travel to places like Trinidad to wet their whistles with alcohol not made in bathtubs and not likely to kill them. This drink became a favorite at the Queens Park Hotel. The hotel is no longer there, but thankfully they left us with this tasty libation. So let's build this jump off. For this, we're gonna need crushed ice, so it's a good time to break out the old Lewis bag and wood mallet. This is a great drink to make when something has really aggravated you or when you're just fucking done with life's bullshit. Anyway, Let's fill the ice bag. Fill that old Lewis bag with ice and then gingerly take out all that frustration and rage. Fuck everyone and everything! Fuck him, fuck him, fuck him! That's probably good. Maybe needs a little more rage. There we go. That should do it. Now this drink we're just gonna build right in the glass. First, put in a handful of mint leaves. Smack them if you feel them frisky. Some people like to muddle them, but I find that the drink looks prettier if you just kind of give them a little stir, get those oils around the glass. Now we add two ounces of Demerara rum. I'm using Hamilton 86. And then half an ounce of Demerara syrup, which you can buy online at Amazon but I prefer to make my own because it's cheaper and you can modify the sweetness to taste. A bottle of Demerara syrup on Amazon goes for between 11 and $20, but you can just buy Demerara sugar for $5 on Amazon if your grocery store doesn't carry it. It's just one part sugar to one part water. Bring it to a boil and take it off. If you want it richer, just add more sugar. Then three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And now we're gonna add our crushed ice. Well. And now you grab your swizzle stick or your bar spoon. Swizzle the hizzle out of this nizzle. And there it is, the Queen's Park Swizzle. Cheers, assholes. Oh, that is good. It's very bright. The, the Demerara sugar and the Demerara syrup have these bold flavors. And then the lime juice and the crushed ice just add this airiness to it that's hard to beat. Now, a lot of people will choose to mix in the, the Angostura bitters, but I think it makes a prettier drink when you put it on top, and you're gonna get that anyway. It's gonna melt through the ice and get into the drink, and you're gonna pick it up. Oh wow, that is good. 
God, I could drink these all night. And I think I will. Try one yourself. Let me know what you think in the comments. Cheers, assholes. I'm not going to spit that out. Mmm. So, uh, <laughs> the Paris Olympics opening ceremonies happened last week, and everyone is losing their minds over it. Devout Christians are very offended about a tableau that was performed as being a super gay parody of Leonardo da Vinci's painting of The Last Supper. Wow, even people I know who worked about a few weeks ago have become born again and saved just in time to be super upset. People who were posting memes about grabbing people by the pussy a few years ago, posting things like fuck your feelings, or now clutching their pearls over some crazy tableau in Paris. Weird. Now I know that some of my friends and family are not necessarily going to like my take on this, and that's okay. We can still be friends. I'm just telling you my personal observations on this crazy farce. Now, unless the Last Supper was held on a fashion runway and Dionysus showed up and wiggled his fruit draped boy bits in the apostles' faces, this wasn't the Last Supper. This was supposed to be some sort of ancient bacchanalian ritual, but it didn't even quite get that right. I'm not sure why Papa Smurf had to show up butt-ass naked to the Olympics in Paris. Talk about ruining your childhood. Fuck. And I don't know why everyone was in drag or various states of edgy undress. And I mean, why are people upset about Christianity not being well represented in a pagan tradition? It's like we've come full circle. Christianity stole much of their rituals from pagans, and now a pagan ritual has turned performance art and made Christians think they're being made fun of. This is dizzying. Maybe it's a drink. You should try this. You'd be way happier. But you know, what I'm most offended about is that the Olympics are supposed to be a celebration of the body athletic. Agility, strength, things like that. And yet, Every single person in this aesthetically unappealing farce of a performance was decidedly not in shape. Now I say this as someone who's definitely not in shape. But then I'm not prancing around in my birthday suit at the opening ceremonies of the Summer Olympics. Just saying. And even if it was meant to be the Last Supper, so what? Leonardo da Vinci didn't invent Christianity with his painting, so why is it so sacred all of a sudden? Not too long ago, funny memes involving this very painting were being circulated around and nobody cared.
You know, I doubt that God is really that butthurt about this. No doubt he's seen way worse from humanity. Or, you know, maybe he hasn't. Maybe this is the worst. That's it. Flood the whole damn thing again. Make fun of my dinner party. <laughs> the artist, a little Frenchman named Thomas Jolly, who organized this insanity, said he never means to offend anyone with his art, and that this was meant to bring people together in reconciliation. Well, that's exactly what he didn't do. There are a lot of people not getting their jollies off of Thomas Jolly. Then the Paris IOC spokeswoman, Anne Discamps, doubled down on that statement and said that she thinks he achieved his goal right before she had to apologize to a large chunk of the world's population. I think one thing is certain. These two people have completely emancipated themselves from reality. Hey, see, maybe they did bring us all together. We can all be together in agreement that Thomas Jolly and Anne Discamps are totally removed from the real world. Well done, guys. Well done. Personally, I thought it looked like the village people tripping on coke and LSD. Anyhow, what did we all really expect when they took an ancient Greek ritual? and told Gay Paris to reimagine it. It was like pouring gasoline on an already fabulous flame if you get my drift. So take a breath, have a drink. There are way worse things happening in the world than the Paris Olympics. Cheers, assholes. While I share my thoughts on the idiosyncrasies, while I share my thoughts on the idiosyncrasies, idiosyncrasies, my opinions are my own. Son of a bitch! I knew I forgot something. God damn it! Shit on me! Now I, cool. Let's try that again. And I mean, why are people upset about Christianity not being well represented? Represented. Yeah. I sneezed into a fan. I flew back in my face. I deserve that. So take a drink. Have a breath. Wait, no. Won't show you. Oh, 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 I'm French. 
Ho, 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 ho,